Hey, what's up? For this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, my frustration about being single. Now, I'm really frustrated when it comes to being single. And the main reason I'm... The main reason I've been like really frustrated about being single is because... Well, like I said in my other episode, I want to share my love with someone. I believe I deserve that. I mean, I, anybody deserves that, to share their love with someone. So, um, I mean, Valentine's is a lot of these holidays, like Valentine's, New Year's, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving. And you're count and you're single in all those days. It's really, really frustrating. I would uh, wake up every morning crying, and I would go to sleep every night crying because I didn't have a girlfriend next to me. So I felt like like I was missing out. I was definitely missing out on. And sharing my love with someone or having a love life but I clearly felt really frustrated and it's also it also has a lot to do with sex because sex is a is a physical mutual feeling of living and it makes you want to live longer when you have sex like to experience it over and over and over and that's why I was so frustrated because I wasn't having sex with anybody. I didn't have sex with girls or anything. I didn't. Just nobody. Uh, so I didn't really have that connection. Um, so being single has been extremely frustrating for me because I do wish I can have a girlfriend in my life. I do wish I can go out there casually hooking up and eventually that hookup will turn into a relationship depending on the the way you communicate with that person and yeah that's what's important and um in my situation I always felt embarrassed of myself I always felt like well I don't have a job have a decent job I don't I'm not cut up I'm not really buff for anything I felt like I didn't deserve to have a girlfriend in my life because of that and what I've been feeling has been extremely shallow and I've been very doubtful for myself because I didn't really have the the tools to satisfy a relationship uh, so I just felt embarrassed by myself and I felt like I wasn't worth being with so that was my frustration about being single um, my my uh, mother my aunt my cousins my relatives it would say like Girls want you for your money. Girls want you to uh, be successful. They want. They don't want a guy who's cheap. They. They're gonna look at you and, and say that I'm wasting my time with a cheap steak or a cheapskate. And um, when my mom said that to me, because I told her I went to a bar and and she was asking me if I left a tip, and I was like, yeah, I left two dollars. And then um, she told me, well, that's not how it works. You got to leave more than that because they live by tips. And when you're with a girl, she's going to look at you like like I'm with, I'm wasting my time and I'm with a cheapskate. cheapskate. And that made me cry. It made me cry and it made me call my mom a bitch after she said that. Because um, my mom is not really good with words, but she said she was helping me out. And that didn't help me out at all. That actually made me more depressed and made me more doubtful of myself.
So she basically said that I wasn't going to be a good boyfriend. She didn't say the exact words, but that's how it sounded like. I even told my mom that that um, that's what you basically said, that I wasn't going to be a good boyfriend. She didn't say the exact words, but like that's how it sounded like. I told her that you said I was a, a you said I was cheap and that she was gonna gonna look at me and that I, like I was so cheapskate that she was wasting her time. And then I told her that means you basically you basically just said I was I was never gonna be a good boyfriend. And she said she didn't say that. Those weren't the exact words. A lot of people they don't say what they mean and they end up saying things that comes out the wrong way. I say things a lot and it comes out the wrong way. Um, in this situation, in this scenario, my mom said, said something that came out the wrong way. And um, my aunt will say things to me that will come out the wrong way. And um, a lot of people, they end up saying things and they hurt your feelings and this whole bullshit thing about fats not caring about your feelings, but uh, whatever dude, I mean, it is what it is, life is hard and no one has to be perfect, like literally no one has to be perfect and it's just hard and, and very stressful. So, um, it, it put me in a, in a dilemma that I wasn't good enough. So, it built up my insecurity more. I mentioned, I mentioned in an episode that, um, I was at a meetup. I was at a group meetup and I tried talking to this girl and she was like, this other girl quickly just grab her and walk her to the bar. I was having a conversation that was quickly interrupted and it was really rude but um, at the same time I've been through it so I'm actually a bit older, 39 and they're like in their 20s. So it's, um, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> I just don't care anymore in that situation and I could have talked to other girls that were there at the bar but I talked to that one girl because I had done an F45 class with her and I had a chance to um, have a mutual conversation like instead of a, a rush rush conversation until class starts so we could like finally um, have a mutual conversation but it never happened so it it is what it is and it hurt my feelings and it made me develop more more insecurity in myself so I've been like I've been single for a very very long time I've been single for 12 years I haven't had sex in in like 11 years so it's been a rocky frustrating roller coaster for me and my emotions build up more and more and moving here in North Carolina it was a change but it was a good change and I could have gotten someone it's just that I didn't like really um, take that position like really I, I'm the type of guy that doesn't really know how to approach a, a girl uh, I do in in some way but then when there's like then when there's um, someone walking away and and um, uh, I don't know. It's it's very frustrating. It's very um, it's very um like it's weird actually. I mean, I 
a lot of girls are, are interested in me. It's just that you got to know how to approach them properly. And if you don't know how to approach them, then nothing's going to happen. Or, you know, all you got to do is say hi and communicate. Because communication is key in a relationship. And I wish I had that um, satisfaction with me. But I don't. And, you know, money is very... Um, it's very sensitive and it's very um money gets you places and it builds up excitement in your life so a lot of people are interested in a lot of excitement that you build up like I'll give you an example a perfect example is Disney World everybody loves Disney World having a great time at, at the theme park building great memories and those memories cost money they cost a lot of money to build up so the more you have money the the more memories you can create the more magical memories you can create um, I flew all the way to um, LA for for someone that's an emotional supporter, but we went to Universal Studios at the V. We went to the VIP, um, and we built up great memories, and it was a life-changing experience. I had a great time there, and we went to Santa Monica Beach with her dog, and it was a life-changing experience that made me feel peaceful and happy and. It just made me feel all around joy and, and it w I was grateful for that and um, yeah I went to uh, LA to network for a film and I, I communicate with people and communication made me really really happy like when I had that that conversation with someone I was mutually happy being there. Now, even though I'm not happy with myself, because I'm more at peace with myself, and I'm not going to be happy unless I have a girlfriend in my life, because I've been waiting and waiting for that passion. And because I'm trying to be vegan, I'm actually picky, because um, I want a girlfriend who's vegan, and... That's what I prefer. I prefer someone who is on the route with me of believing in the safety of animals, uh, not harming them, not harming the planet, and um, doing what's best for the world. But uh, you know, I'm in my, I'm about to be 40 years old, and it's gonna be kind of tough, kind of tough, but. We'll see what happens in the future. I'm not gonna. I'm still young, and um, I got plenty of life to live, and I'm just gonna enjoy every moment of it. Like once, cause once I hit 40, my life is gonna change for the best. I mean, even right now, my life is changing for the best. Every day is is a new chapter in your life. Every day is a is a new. Um, it's a new beginning of your life, so um, you just gotta live positive and you gotta avoid the negativity and just be positive and just enjoy life for what it is and enjoy life the way you want to. So don't let anybody hold you back, just um, reach for the stars, reach for success because you're a success story and um, I mean look at me I grew up with a I was in an accident when I was two years old I fell out of a moving car I was in a coma for two months I got out of the coma I did therapy for a year I got back home I grew up with a traumatic brain injury so it was a journey an emotional journey and a process it's just that now it's like you know, because everybody's in a relationship, create reproducing families, and 
it makes you want to be a part of that chapter and um, I mean I wish I had a had a kid that I could um, um, that I could like teach martial arts to a, a, a boy or a girl I uh, a lot of uh, a lot of grandmasters and a lot of teachers and instructors they want to they want to pass on a, a martial arts legacy to to their firstborn and that's kind of what I, I would like to do and I would love to experience it but having kids is a lot of money it's very very expensive to have kids I'm actually more skeptical about marriage than I am than I am about having kids because marriage is is um it's it's a it's a partnership it's a business partnership because you're sharing your wealth with uh the person you marry and uh it's it does there's a lot of money involved and when there's a divorce then it's a waste of money like you're just really wasting a lot of money with the divorces and the, to me I'm kind of skeptical with marriage because of that because here in the states marriage is all about money more than it is about love I kind of understand marriage in a way of of a secure companionship because like I said we're all planets within the planet and a, you heard of the expression dancing under the moonlight well um, a marriage or a, a wedding ring or a whatever it's kind of like a moon that you dance under. So your uh, your uh, partner is a moon, and you're a planet, and that moon is like dancing with you under the moonlight. So that's kind of like what what marriage is to me. It's basically dancing under the moonlight, uh, a planet dancing under its moonlight, something like that. That's philosophy, that's what I go by, so again it is what it is. But um but um my frustration about being single is that I haven't had sex in eleven years. I've been single for twelve. Uh it's I see couple after couple after couple it creates a lot of jealousy and a lot of confusion where with my life and also I'm about to be 40 so I feel like I'm gonna go through another year being single and that's how I felt like in the new years that I felt like I'm gonna go through another year being single like Every time, even on Valentine's Day, I felt like, you know, the pressure of not being single, but I'm single anyway, so I gotta deal with it. And uh, that's the thing about my frustration about being single is that um, I don't appreciate it, but it, it, there's nothing I can do about it because it's just gonna go on and on and it's crazy I mean it is what it is and everybody wants to be with someone everybody wants a girlfriend everybody wants a boyfriend everybody's gonna want marriage eventually or whatever I mean there's nothing wrong with marriage at all it's just that there's a lot of expense involved in marriage, so to me it's um, it's kind of worrying because money is crazy, and I do think a lot about money 
and it's just insane. But my frustration with being single is basically the whole spectrum of not having that that uh, passion, that passionate benefit that will that will uh, make you make you that will make your world worth living and wild that's my frustration about being single and a conversation is key a conversation will keep you happy about living <laughs> and I guess um like I'm single in a way that I don't have no one a lot of people who are single, they live a single life, they go out, they have fun, they have casual encounters, they, um, they just enjoy life in general. But in my situation, I, I wish I can go out. And every time when I do go out, I feel moody and depressed. And uh, very regretful of myself. And um, I think that has a lot to do with me not having a stable career, me not having money in my pocket every weekend or every week. So it's kind of like, um, it's really a buzzkill to think about it. When it comes to being single in my situation, it's a buzzkill. I mean, I try to go out and enjoy life, and but um, it's really hard, and it makes me feel like a loser. It makes me feel like I'm a nobody, like I don't belong, and that really sucks. But um, that's what being that's what my frustration about being single is all about. Even when I was like. Before I went to the, um, the reason I was admitted to a psychiatric unit is because I didn't have a girlfriend in my life. I wanted a girlfriend really, really bad. And when I was in the emergency, when I was in the emergency room, I saw this couple and I was just crying because I wish I had someone in my life. I was like really frustrated. I mean, it was horrible, and I even have a, had a roommate um, who uh, who he was only there for a day, and then he wanted to sue people because he felt they were taking advantage of him. But it was his fault because he showed up in the emergency room, and he just broken up, and he he said that um, they asked him what do he what does he feel. And he said that he feels like killing himself. And um, that's what that's what made security uh, take him to the psychiatric uh, unit. So he wasn't, he was, he, he did feel like they were taking advantage of him. And I mean, dude, I mean, it's, pretty much your fault. <laughs> so I was there for two reasons. One, I didn't have any friends to communicate with or to, you know, like um, hang out with. And two, it's because I didn't have a girlfriend to share my love with. And a lot of people, they do want their love to be shared and to be appreciated and that's what I would want that's what I want for myself and I know that's what people would want for themselves because love is worth living and love is worth fighting for so the first the whole thing about being single is is um, it, it sucks but um you know you do gotta love life and you do gotta love yourself but um sometimes you gotta um have that companion in your life that loves you for you and 
that you love for that person and that's what's important and I don't have that and I was trying to get that at the uh, F45 uh, meetup group but it didn't happen and something very disrespectful happened that made me build up more insecurity in myself and you know you just gotta move on and it is what it is I'm not really a guy looking to just get laid. I'm a guy looking to share my love, share my my uh, my passion. And um, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If it does, then that's great. But um, it's been like extremely long for me, and it's been really frustrating. So, if you're single, um, no sweat, just, uh, build up the confidence, keep trying, enjoy life. People are gonna want to be with you if they see that you're having fun. And if they see that, that you're not having fun in life, then they're not gonna want to be around you. I just gotta think you're too depressing to be with.